I just did like a deep dive masterclass on relative humidity and dew point temperature. It's the video I posted right before this one. I need you to see that or at least understand that before we start explaining wet bulb temperature. So let's talk about what the definition of wet bulb temperature is. American Meteorological Society glossary. Uh, this is going to suck. Isobaric wet bulb temperature. The temperature an air parcel would have if cooled adiabatically to saturation at constant pressure by evaporation of water into it, all latent heat being supplied by the parcel. That is a fancy way of saying what temperature would that air be if you evaporated all of the water out of it. Now, one of the ways this is measured is by a sling psychrometer. It's a special kind of thermometer that gets a little cotton wick at the end of it that you get wet and you swing it through the air. Here's me showing Ginger Z of Good Morning America one on the top of Mount Washington. So dew point temperature is how cold do you have to make that air to make the water condense out of it? Wet bulb temperature is how cold would it get if you evaporated all the water out of it? And this is because the process of evaporation actually requires absorption of heat into that water, which cools the air around it. You see, in order for water to evaporate, in order for water to go from liquid into a gas, it has to absorb heat. It needs like more energy, right? It has to be, molecules have to get excited and rather than all glomming together as a liquid, have to be free and independent in the atmosphere as water vapor. And to do that, they absorb heat. And so in order to do that process, they're actually pulling heat from the air. And as water evaporates, it cools the air around it. So on a day when it's 100% relative humidity, you could sling that sling psychrometer around to try to determine wet bulb temperature, and it would be the same as the air temperature because no water can evaporate off of that cotton wick. The drier and less humid the air is, the faster that water is going to evaporate. The faster it evaporates, the more heat it's pulling from the system, and the cooler that temperature is going to be. As long as it's not 100% relative humidity, the wet bulb temperature will always be cooler than the, like, the ambient air temperature, but warmer than the dew point. And the reason that is, is because the wet bulb temperature is still allowing for that evaporation. You're always going to be below 100% relative humidity. Um, and so that air is always going to be evaporating out, which is why the wet bulb temperature is always going to be a little bit warmer than the dew point. Because the dew point's that temperature where you reach 100% and you have that change from all water vapor to it starting to condense into liquid. The reason anyone even knows what wet bulb temperature is or the reason that it's used in meteorology is because when we are looking at like heat index, like how hot does it feel, uh, which is going to be a big issue this week with this heat streak we're going to see in New England, um, and this is as of June 17th of 2024, um, we need to know that wet bulb temperature because we need to know how much of the sweat on our bodies is going to be evaporating. If it doesn't, it's really humid and less does, it's going to feel warmer than it actually is. That's a key part of the heat index. It's like that temperature plus the moisture in the air comparison together. So yeah, wet bulb temperature, the temperature of the air when you evaporate the water out of it.